Welcome everyone. So in this AKS series, Azure Kubernetes Services series, we'll see how we can host a simple website in our Azure Kubernetes cluster and expose it for public access. Now, all you know is that Kubernetes runs container wrapped around a pod. So we essentially go ahead and create a pod inside Kubernetes, which runs the container. And each of the pod will get an IP address, which is a private IP address, a part of the cluster. So you can't reach the IP address from outside of the cluster. So there is a problem. So there is a way to really open it up for the external world to be able to connect that application, if it is a website or web API, um, to be accessible by outside, to have something like a public URL. So let's see how we can achieve that uh, and then set it up in the Kubernetes. So assume that you have a website. So let's take Nginx as our default website. So if you go ahead and try to create a pod with Nginx, so how that experience would look like. Now, we'll use alias. That's to make sure that we don't type much. So I'll use alias. I'll check if it is connected. Uh, okay, get nodes would be the right command. This will not give me any output. So it gives me, that's fine. So now we have two, a full running. This agent is okay. Things are fine. I just want to see if I have pods available. There is a pod running called Nginx. Do you have a deployment? We have a deployment. So let me delete the deployment just to make sure that there is no confusion. I'm just going to clean up a few things. All right, so there's things which I kind of created to test it out are deleted. So now we have no pod, no deployment, no services available in this cluster. So it's a brand new cluster without having anything. So what we'll do now, what we will go ahead basically and create a pod which will host the Nginx. And let's see the experience. So to create a pod, so we'll say K run pod one and the image is nginx if i just run simply this one there'll be a pod created and then you see that pod is ready running and then if i go ahead and then say k okay, get pod and then i move it like i want to see it why you will have an ip address right each of the pod will get an ip address allocated by the pod um, networking solution. Now you can see that it is 10.24.1.6. Now the machine I'm using is the Azure Cloud Shell. So it is definitely not part of the Kubernetes cluster. So if I try to curl it into this IP address that 10.244.1.6, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna show you anything because this pod is really inside uh, the Kubernetes cluster and only available from inside the Kubernetes cluster. If you have another pod, then you will be able to really interact with this pod using that IP address. It's possible. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna work like that. So let's say I run the same command to create another pod called pod two. So we can say that this is pod one and this is pod two, both running the same image in Unix. So now you get two pods. So you see that to both of the pods running. Now, if I want to, let's say, get inside one of these pods and uh, use the IP address of the pod to really interact with each other. So I see two IP addresses. Now I get into the pod one to ping to pod two. Okay. So to get inside a pod, you can use KEXCC, pod name, that is pod one and 
I use minus it dash dash then sh so that will allow me to get inside the pod and show me the command prompt okay and now if I use ping ping is not available but if I use curl does it is it available curl is also not available apt get curl is already available so we'll say curl http colon 10.2244 so let's run the ip address of the pod one first okay so i'm gonna do this local host thing by running this ip address so it shows up some html output this is exactly the same if you let's say go ahead and run the curl command with http so if you say curl HTTP local host, you get the same output. That's exactly the fine. Now, you, if you notice here on top, you have another IP address called this one. So if I, instead of using the six, if I use curl HTTP colon 10.2244, whatever that value is, 1.7, Let's see what happens. 1.7. Now this also shows because these two pods are within the network, and then I can talk to each other by using their generated IP address. That is all right when you have API to API communication happening internally. Pod to pod communication is allowed for all the pods getting created because all of them will get an IP address. The problem comes when you want to um, expose it outside of the Kubernetes cluster. Now, one thing which we don't do naturally is that we don't create correctly the pod. We use deployment to wrap around the pod so that it is being taken care of by the deployment. If anything happens to the pod, let's say a pod gets deleted, it will be recreated, it will be uh, taken care of in a long run. So we use deployment. So how do you create a deployment? It's fairly simple. Let's assume we use the same Nginx and we create a deployment. If you have to do that, so what we can do, we say k create deploy and then say uh, my web image Nginx. Now what's gonna do? It's gonna go ahead and create a pod with randomly given name. So, so if you say k get deploy, you'll see the deployment in the list. So you have that um my web running here if you just say that if i want to see the pod you'll see the pod also coming up with some dynamic ram name my web dash some random value that's what the, the pod which is getting created by the deployment right so we now have three pods one is covered by deployment another two is not covered so i want to show you one thing if you say k delete pod and pod one if you do that then pod one will be deleted and it will never be created because there is no deployment available to protect it or recreate it however if you notice this id and then if you run the same delete command and if you say delete pod and then the pod name it's going to go ahead and delete the pod but the deployment will notice that pod is deleted so it will spin up another one so you can see the new pod like qksxp is created just a seven second of the age which means that this is now having the kind of um, protection around that so we always use deployment that's what i wanted to talk about now we have a deployment so k okay, get deploy We'll show you the deployment you have. That's my web. Now, my web deployment host pod, they can have IP addresses and they get changed every time there's a new pod assigned or allocated. So we don't really rely on the pod IP address or exposing it outside directly using that IP address because things can change at any given point in time. So what we need 
is that we use something like a service. Think of it like a load balancer. And then you have your backend pool of pods available, which can have multiple different IP addresses and they keep changing. Uh, what service does, it basically maps those pods with our newly created IP address and then map them as an endpoint inside that. So we'll, we'll create a ser simple service first. So I'll say K okay, expose deploy. So we will expose the deployment that we have created, right? That is my web. And we can also give a name by dash dash name, but just simply deploy and my web. And I'll say, I want to expose the port 80. That's the port I want to expose. That's all minimum information you need. Now the service is created. So if you say, K okay, get SVC, you get a my web service which gets in a cluster IP address. So this is an IP address which will remain here. But if you see here, behind the scene, if you say K get SVC, um, my web, that's in the same name as the deployment, um, as OYAML, you'll find a bit more details. So you'll find what is the cluster IP address, what are the port it's getting opened, what all things available. Even you can go ahead and use this describe. Okay, describe. Let me just check it out. Okay, get as we see my web it's working so it should be fine with describe you'll find that now this service description talks about few things it talks about what is the ip address of the service and what are the endpoints right now you see only one however if you let's say uh, go ahead and edit this my web and make more than one pod. So we'll let us do that. Okay. So let's say K edit deploy my web. If you do that, then you just go ahead and say that I want to change the number of replicas into three. Let's say three. More than two. That's good. The deployment will be edited. And if you now run this service, you will find that service still remains the same with the IP address. But if you describe the service, you will find a little different approach, right? So you have now three endpoints, three IP addresses for three different pods, and then it basically maps the port number 80. Now, how many pods? Just to get the pod listed here, which generated by the deployment are three because I have mentioned them as three instances. So you can see that if I create one of these pods, a new pod will be created. A new pod might get a totally different IP address. And then the, the service will automatically map that IP address and make it as one of the endpoints. So when you land to this service, what happens, it basically points you to one of these available pods behind the scene. So you don't need to really remember the IP address for each of these pods. Okay, neither you have to do anything. Service takes care of monitoring those IP addresses, uh, pods, and then assigning those IP addresses as the endpoint. That's what's happening. But again, this IP address is not accessible from here. So if you say ping this, it's not gonna uh, ping anything because it's not available. Now, what you can do, you can go inside of this pod and try to ping this because let's say if I go ahead and say KEXCC uh, for, um, pod two, that's a pod minus IT dash dash bin SH. And then I say curl HTTP colon this is going to go ahead and show you the nginx so we are able to expose the nginx 
outside of the pod uh, using the service endpoint, right? Service a IP address. Because if you notice the IP address I mentioned is not the IP address of the pod. So if you say k get pod minus o wide, that will give you the list of, let's say, IP addresses assigned to each of these pod. None of these are having that IP address, which I mentioned, that is 210110. It is only 24. This is 06978, all these IP addresses. So these none of these IP addresses have mentioned in my um, in my HTTP curl call, and but still it shows the Nginx landing page. Now this is not going to work. So if you let's say copy this and paste it over here in the browser, you will not be able to see anything because this is not yet exposed. Now what this service really looks like is that if you say k edit as we see my web, it has got a capability called changing the type of thing. Now one of the things we can do is that we can change this type. And I say that I don't um, I need to open this up from outside. And to do that we use one of the types called load balancer. You can also give this option while creating, but since I'm modifying an existing service, I can do that pretty much from here. If things are fine, it is accepted. Now, if you get service, you will see that it's gonna get an external IP address. The status is pending. If I say await um, that watch, you will find eventually an IP address will be allocated to this service. So you can see now a public IP address is 20, dot 75 dot 175 dot 78 is allocated to this now if we use this ip address and try to run it in my browser what happens essentially this is a service and it's again pointing to all the three pods which get created by the deployment my web and the endpoints are mapped now what it shows in my browser is the, is the nginx load page which is basically coming from my local uh, uh, pod uh, file container running inside the pod, right? So you can see that now over here in this case, if you say k get svc, if I say k describe svc my web, you'll find that it will have three endpoints just like we saw before. But these are all internal IP address. I cannot reach this internal IP address for sure. What I can reach is that external IP address is 20.175.145.78. Uh, 20 from anywhere in the world using my browser, and then it la launches this Nginx welcome page. That's what exactly you see when you run an Nginx and then try to see it in browser, right? What you have seen is the curl command, and that's a raw output. But at the end of the day, now we are able to expose a website which has got a web interface over uh, a public IP address deployed within the AKS cluster. So I could make you feel how it really need to go step by step, starting from creating a pod to wrapping it around deployment to creating a service to expose that deployment dynamically and then changing the type of the IP address uh, the service would get uh, from cluster IP, which is the default one, to load balancer to have a public IP address and then use that public IP address to reach out to this website, whatsoever it is, and then see it from your browser. Hope you have enjoyed this session and thank you very much for watching.